How's it going guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and the new iPad is in the house. You know, we called it the iPad 3, Apple announced it as the new iPad and we're still kind of calling it the Apple iPad 3, but it's the new and improved device with a retina display, a five megapixel iSight camera on the back, a processor with quad core graphics capabilities and more. Now is this thing up to par with Android tablets? Is it still the king in the tablet market or has Android overtaken it in 2011 and in the beginning of 2012? We'll find out in the review, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with phones and tablets like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game on the site, which you can win. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you won't deal with rebates, you'll walk out the door not dealing with paperwork or waiting eight to 10 weeks for your rebates to come back, all those stupid debit cards, it's obnoxious and you don't have to deal with it at Best Buy Mobile. You walk out working without dealing with any rebates. Let's take a look at this. Part two, we take a look at Apple's iTunes store here, and you can see it's obviously optimized for iPad here, and you got your new and noteworthy stuff where you can scroll from side to side and you see the dots that correspond to uh, all the pages you have down there, and of course, the one dot gets darker as you scroll over, but you got featured, you have top charts, you have genius as well, and then of course, genres where you can search, and down here, you'll see music, movies, TV shows, ping, podcast, audiobooks, iTunes, you purchased and download. So much like iOS 5.1 on the iPhone, you can come in here and come to purchased or come to downloads and see, you know, let's say you want five, uh, let's say five songs from your iPhone that you don't have on here, you just got this out of the box, you haven't synced it, you can go and download those five individual songs and then moving forward, whenever you download something, you know, if I were to download something on my MacBook Air, for example, it would automatically download over here. So the same thing back and forth, if I downloaded, uh, Wild Ones, I could click it over here, download it here, and then see it over on my MacBook Air as well with that feature turned on. Make sure you turn that on in the settings though, prior to, uh, and I'll show you actually where it is. Let's go back out here. Make sure you turn it on the settings prior to actually doing it because let's say you download three songs, it should pop up and tell you that a song is downloading on your iTunes account, but until you actually go in and enable it, you can't download those previous songs without having to individually download them if that makes any sense. And that's kind of confusing, but it's, uh, it's nice to have it turned on out of the gate. So you can see obviously this is optimized for the 9.7 inch display. What you want to do is come down here to store and then you'll see two different prompts for music and apps. You can turn both of those on and then of course you can enable your, uh, your the ability to download stuff simultaneously from one iOS device to the other. So pretty quick and pretty easy. There are no real changes. Maps also pretty cool here as well. You got nice pinch to zoom capabilities. You can see the Charlotte metro area there. You can see where I'm at in the city. And then of course I can go over here to directions, get some directions. I can see current location, wherever I've dropped the pins. I can move this around, go to the airport. I was using this earlier and you can easily get directions that way. And you can also search. So I pinched the zoom responsiveness, very good on this device as well. And you can use it in portrait mode as well. And again, the transition effects. One thing I've always really enjoyed about iOS is say what you will about the operating system. It may seem closed in comparison to Windows Phone or Android. What I do like about it, it's very consistent and it's almost a consistently fluid experience. You know, I look at iOS and every single time I use it, it works almost the same way. Whereas with Android, sometimes I'll click an app and it'll take two or three seconds to load. Then the next time it'll take a second. Then the next time it'll take five seconds to load. And so it's, uh, it gets a little bit old after a while. So you can see here, two things I wanna highlight. Let's show a TweetDeck app, because I wanna show you how TweetDeck looks, because it's obviously optimized for the iPhone and not the iPad, so it shows it on the smaller display. Twitter, on the other hand, optimized for the iPad. You can see here, it takes full advantage of the 9.7 inch display, and then of course I can click on one, the Timo News one, for example, and I can scroll back and forth between these individual screens and make it quick. And, uh, and easy that way. And then I can uh, go over here and do the same thing with gallery. Five megapixel camera on this bad boy. It's got an eye, they're referring to it as an eyesight camera. It does have HD video recording capabilities as well. Although you can't upload 1080p HD video directly from the tablet itself to YouTube. You have to actually export it off and upload it that way. For whatever reason, it only uh, uploads in 720p. So I got a neat little um, Evo 3D battery door here. So we'll take a look at this in the camera and you can see what it looks like. You get your options down here, turn it on grid. I can flip it over, or I can go to recording as well. Come over to the front, you can see the front facing camera for FaceTime, and of course I can switch over to video pretty quickly, but it looks good on the display. Again, five megapixel camera here, so similar, uh, similar results you're gonna see on the iPhone 4 with its five megapixel camera, but still looks relatively decent. And you can see my cat, I was taking a picture uh, when I was moving earlier, uh, this, or last weekend rather, my cat was looking under the door and making uh, an odd face as the movers were moving, so I got down on the ground and took a picture of that. That's my kitty. And you can see the camera roll as well. I can scroll out and easily see the camera roll. I can delete, I can edit, I can make a slideshow and I can hit done. And same thing here, you can turn on the slideshow. When you go to the unlock screen, I can click on this and it'll automatically display all my pictures. 
So that's a, a nice little feature as well. Front facing camera for FaceTime, which you've got FaceTime installed, and then you have Photo Booth as well, and you can take advantage of that. And you see a lot of stuff from iOS 5.1, like Game Center. Of course, this thing's capable of playing music, which is a hallmark of iOS devices, with the iPod kind of being the back end uh, system, if you will, for playing this. So obviously, the iPad uh, interfaces here it looks a little bit differently, or different again because of the screen. You can see down here Store, and you've got some buttons: Playlist, Songs, Artists, Album, and more. And you can see all the different songs that I have recently added. I've got 90s music, music videos, recently played, Top 25 most played, Purchase, Running, and more. So let's go into my running playlist, for example, and you're going to see a lot of different upbeat songs I listen to while I run. So you can see uh, Train was playing at the moment and I've got the ability to change the volume over here and I've got the buttons down here. So one song I'm really enjoying at the moment is So Good by B.O.B. And you can see a nice loudspeaker which plays on the back right here. And we'll let that play so you can see what it looks like. Again, portrait mode as well, just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you turn it off and back on. That's what it looks like. The biggest challenge I've found is that when I'm running, be it I mean, I obviously don't use this when I'm running out in the wild, but when I'm on like a treadmill or something, the biggest challenge is keeping it there and trying to hit these little three buttons at the top while I'm running. It's harder than it looks when you're bouncing around. That said, hey, that's not a big deal. But you can see here again, it gives you a nice little layout between the song, the artist, the CD collection that was in, and of course the time, and I can edit that playlist much like I can on iOS. And then of course I can go to all my music by just clicking on songs, and I can scroll back and forth really quickly and really easily through those, and you have the ability to shuffle, and, uh, and replay the music over and over again. You get the access to the genius as well. So all in all, you know, it's a nice improvement from the uh, iPad 2. It's got that quad-core graphics capability, so if you play games, you're gonna notice a difference here. It's got a five megapixel camera, so if for whatever reason, you, know, you use your iPad or you use your tablet to take pictures a lot, you're gonna be pleased with the camera. It's a nice improvement. So it's FaceTime as well. It adds some nice features, like the Retina display, 2048 by 1536 pixels, and a 9.7 inch display means it's gonna be big enough to get some things done, big enough to do things like watch Netflix, but not quite big enough to the point where it feels like it's too big or it's gonna be hard to carry around, things like that. All in all, it's pretty decent tablets. An evolutionary upgrade though, and you know, the question that I have whenever I see things like this, the iPhone 4S, it's 2012, and the smartphone market is heating up like crazy, and so is the tablet market. You know, there's some great Android alternatives as well. You look at the, Ace, uh, the Asus Transformer, you look at this is the, uh, the Zoom series, now the Zyboard series, you look at the Galaxy Tab series, and more, and you see a lot of different Galaxy Note now, 10.1, you see a lot of different Android competitors in the marketplace as well. I still think this is the ultimate tablet on the market, given, you know, in terms of general sales. I think this thing's gonna sell better than any one Android tablet. That said, these evolutionary updates are gonna be good for, so, for just so long, and then all of a sudden they're gonna realize, hey, we're being surpassed by Android, being surpassed by Windows or Microsoft, with Windows for tablet, we need to make some substantial changes. I'm hoping they do that with the iPhone this year, but then again, when they come out with the iPad 4, it's gonna have to be a substantial change, at least in my opinion, with the way the tech market is moving right now. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDoc.com with the iPad, the iPad 3, the new iPad, whatever it is you wanna call it. So stay tuned to PhoneDoc.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook as well at Facebook.com slash phone dog, which I'm gonna try and load up right now while I'm talking. We do a lot of cool stuff on our Facebook page, so check it out, facebook.com slash phone dog, like us, we have some giveaways coming up, and that's super exciting as well. Follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron, and be sure to check out our rankings program as well, where you can rank your favorite smartphone in our rankings and let your voice be heard. PhoneDog.com slash rankings. And of course on Facebook at my personal fan page, Facebook.com slash PhoneDogAB. Thanks so much for watching. More to come on Apple's newest wonder, the new iPad. We'll see you next time.